You know, there is one word which you use, is very strong. Say a story to somebody and that person says, no, finished. Your whole story, your whole labor, all efforts are gone. The impact of no, you have to understand and learn to use with yourself and not with others. Never use word no to others with whom you live, whom you love. Learn to use that no for yourself. This will bring, this will give you strength. No, I will not do this. Ramatirtha, a great sage, was very fond of apples. He writes, he could not, anywhere he found good apple and his palate used to run. You know. It became obsession for him. He used to think about apples all the time. Even if he was hungry, he wouldn't eat unless he saw good apple. His appetite was because of the apples. He would get an apple, so he, he would eat. He analyzed this and one day he said, Okay, my dear apple, I am going to set you right. So he kept apple, he would keep apple, clean it, wash it, cut it, put it in a plate, decorate it nicely and would not eat it. In few days' time, that obsession was over. You will have to discipline yourself somehow or other. If you are prepared to discipline yourself, then there will be no problem. Because your buddhi is helping inside, telling you it's not good for you, for a diabetic patient. Sugar is like poison. But I have seen diabetic patient being irresponsible, take more sugar. Like to steal sometimes sugar. They know it's injurious. Why? For lack of discipline. So you have to understand that for learning yoga science, which leads you to highest rung of life, which leads you to the sanambunam of life, which leads you to the kingdom of wisdom, peace and bliss, which leads you to freedom from all pains and miseries, you have to discipline yourself. But life is not meant for don'ts. Patanjali never says, don't do it. Patanjali said, do it under conscious control. Don't say later on that I have committed mistake. Suppose you have stolen something and somebody caught hold of you and police says, is it good for you to do this? No. Why did you do it? Habit. You will have to analyze what is that habit you are talking of. I personally visited many interrogation centers where the criminals were interrogated in a very scientific manner. In Japan, then in Tokyo you will find every after three people there is one policeman. It is a crimeless city. Daylight all the time at night anywhere you go. Just people are drunk. But they don't disturb anybody. And if someone disturbs, immediately police holds them. I wanted to know how they interrogate the criminals. So they ask, why did you do, do this crime? I was drunk. What do you mean by you are drunk? When you are drunk, what happens? You lose your own consciousness, but your consciousness becomes active as far as others are concerned. I'll give you the example. The example will help you.
you are drunk and you don't know whether you are wearing clothes or not. But if somebody comes nude in front of you, you'll say, hey, nude man, where are you going? You ugly man, you don't know how to dress up. But as far as your own nakedness concern, is concerned, you don't know anything about it. Yes. It makes mind extrovert. You become very active as far as others are concerned. You become completely unaware as far as you are concerned. The criminal, the police officer says, I also drink. This crime you have committed consciously because you are a criminal. It's not under the influence of drinks you have done it. So somewhere you are suppressing something in your heart and mind, you see. And that suppression, you could not hit your mother and father because they support you in childhood. And you have that anger. And you are hiding that anger. Best of your part you express, the worst part you don't. The vast part of your personality remains submerged in the unconscious. So here you, you grow anger within you and outside you smile. When your friend comes, you say, hello, how are you? You're very polite. And people call you civilized, and you are highly educated and well-dressed. But inside you are holding anger. Now, when you get married to your wife, you get married to somebody, make her wife, make many promises. Oh, I will be looking after you. You will be queen of my heart. You'll be angled between sun and moon. You see, you make many, many things, and poor girl believes you. <laughs> and then you get married to her. Get married to her. Now it's easy for you. She's the easy prey for you. So you let out your anger on her. It could be done by woman to man too. Don't think that I'm tempering women only. It can be done both ways. And then he lets out all his anger on his wife because he could not let it out on his mother, his father, his friends. They will challenge him. If the woman is weak, she will accept it. First time she will accept it, he loves me. I don't know what has happened. Let me help him. He's an angry man. But that anger was not expressed fully. So next day he gets angry again. So woman becomes a little defensive. And third day she says, Okay, if you behave this way, I will also create my defense mechanism. Look at the anger here. Prepare somebody to become defensive and shares that criminality to her. Why drunkards are prosecuted? Not that they are hurting themselves. Mm -hmm. Who cares? If you jump in the ocean, then nobody is going to prosecute your dead body. You see. But if you pull somebody and jump with him, trying to kill him, that is considered crime. Both are crimes if you kill yourself or kill somebody. Under the influence of such intoxication, you forget yourself. The fourth sutra says, Britisarupyam, etc. You are identifying yourself with your thoughts. 